Hi, in this video I'm going to share one of the most valuable insights I can give you about learning to play by ear. Learning to express the sounds that you imagine directly on your instrument. And by playing by ear, I don't mean fumbling around for the notes and not knowing what you're doing. Some people, that's what they mean when they use that term, but that's not what we're talking about at all. I'm talking about the highest form of musical understanding there is, where you can just listen to the radio, or you can imagine a melody in your mind, and you just instantly know how to play that melody in any key on your instrument. And what I'm going to demonstrate in this video comes from the chapter Sound, Map, and Instrument from my book Improvise For Real. And the idea is to think about the journey that a musical idea has to take to go from being a sound that you can imagine in your mind to being something that you could express on your instrument. And the key realization here is that there are really two phases to this journey. There are two components to it. The first is a translation from the sound to the tonal map. And so we need to learn to recognize the tonal numbers that make up that melody that we're imagining. We have to learn to visualize where these sounds are located on our tonal map of the octave. Then there's a second translation that takes place, which is much simpler, which is just learning to project those, those ideas that we can now visualize on our tonal map, learning to project those onto our instrument. So you've got a melodic idea, maybe it's the notes 3, 4, and 5. So you've, you've translated this melody that you could hear in your mind, and you've understood that that's 3, 4, and 5 on my tonal map. Well, what does that look like? And whatever key that I'm, I'm playing in now, I need to be able to instantly project that 3, 4, and 5 onto my instrument. So that's the second half of this journey, is the translation from the map to the instrument. And so this is the journey from sound to map to instrument that I want to demonstrate in this video. And we're going to go through this process together with a bunch of simple melodies, and I think you'll see for yourself how this process flows, and you'll know how to practice it as well yourself. Let's begin with the first part of the journey, the translation from sound to map. This is the part that I find the most fascinating personally, because this is where maybe for the first time in our lives we really begin to understand what are all those sounds that make up all that gorgeous music that we've been enjoying all our lives. And so to keep the uh, examples manageable and simple, we're going to play within just a very, very small musical range. We're only going to use the notes 6, 7, 1, 2, and 3 from your tonal map. So it's this little region from 6 up to 3. Note 6 is on the bottom, that's going to be our tonal center. And so these melodies will sound like they're in a minor key to your ear, which they are. That's what happens when we use note 6 as a tonal center. Um, for reference, I'm going to put a 6 chord here. And so the notes that we're going to be working with are these. Six, seven, one, two. playing in the key of E natural, if that's important to you, but it really doesn't matter. And the first thing that we need to do is to study these sounds. And so, you know, depending on where you are in your IFR practice, this is either going to be really easy for you or this is brand new to you and I don't know. But the, the key point that I want to make about this is that, you know, you don't take a final exam before you've taken the course, right? It's not fair. And so don't judge yourself if you don't recognize these sounds or if you can't follow everything that we do in this video today um, because I'm just showing you the practice. And the great thing about improvisation is that taking the course is, is super fun because it's improvising. The course is improvising and jamming and being aware of the tonal numbers and creating your own music and it's all just a lot of fun. But it's through that practice that you will come to recognize these tonal numbers and, and you'll be able to you know, understand instantly everything that I demonstrate today and you'll see it's really quite simple. And so let's begin by just clarifying these sounds and really trying to notice what's special and unique about each one. If I play this note 6, that's the tonal center. That's the most relaxed note there is. This is the note that sounds like home. There's not going to be any other note in the octave that sounds more final um, than this note. Like if we need to end, uh, right, that's the note we're going to end on. That is the most final note there is. That's the tonal center. And by contrast, the note just above it, the way harmony works is through this sort of alternating sequence of, of, of tension and relaxation. And so the note just above that is going to be much more tense. That's note 7. 7 wants to relax in the 6. Just pay attention to that. Notice those sensations. 6 is the tonal center. 7 is much more tense. 
6 is the tonal center. And now just on the other side of that tension in note 7, I find another relaxation. It's not as relaxed as note 6, but it's a note of the 6 chord. And so it's going to be more relaxed than note 7. And this is note 1. Listen, listen to that journey of relaxation in 6, going up to tension in 7, and relaxing a little bit in note 1. This is our 6. 6 and then 7 is more tense and then 1 is more relaxed 7 is more tense and 6 is the most relaxed of all and so with the, just these sounds 6, 7, 1 what we need to do is, is learn to follow that mentally and visualize that on your tonal map even if I'm not giving you the tonal numbers so for example if I sing a melody Da, 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 da. Can you picture in your mind six, seven, one, seven, six? So, for example, if I just go from the lowest to the highest, ba, da, dum, you need to be able to translate that to six, one, six. Or if I add words to it and I say, my funny valentine can you feel that that melody is is holding you in in a suspended state it's holding you in tension it starts in relaxation my and then my funny valentine you can can you feel that like alternating going up and down up and down up and down right but my funny valentine it's not resolved unless i go back home right and so what that melody is in your mind, you have to translate that. You have to follow along and picture, like, you know, like riding a horse that you're trying not to get thrown. You've got to follow along on your tonal map as you're hearing that. You need to recognize that as six, seven, one, seven, one, seven, six, seven, one, seven, one, seven. And then it goes on. Let's go a little farther. So we have these notes. Six, seven, and one. Notice what happens when I go up to two, two, one. Can you feel how two is more suspended than one? Again, peaks and valleys. That's how harmony works. So six is the root. That's the most relaxed note of all. Seven is more tense. Then I can relax into one a little bit. But then notice how two stands out. Maybe he wants to come back to one. And so that suspended feeling in two, that's the essence of note two in this context, in what we call the sixth harmonic environment. When note six is acting as the tonal center, this note two is a suspended note. Ah, two wants to come down to one. And then of course seven, very tense, and six at the bottom. Okay, let's go all the way up to note three now. And notice the peaks and valleys. Six is the tonal center, seven is more tense, one is relaxed because it's in the sixth chord, two is the suspended note, and so on the other side of two I should find another relaxation, which I do. It's note three, six, seven, one, two, three. So notice how two is more suspended, and we said earlier maybe it wants to relax into one, but that two could also relax upward into three. Notice how the music here is unresolved and here it's more resolved. That's your two and your three. So coming down, three is more relaxed, two stands out, it's more suspended, one is more relaxed in the chord, and then this seven is super tense, and finally we can relax in the six. So that's just a little bit of a uh, Musical tourism, just taking you on a little guided tour of those five notes. So let's look at another song example that uses all of these notes. I'll stay with jazz standards because they're just great teaching examples with very simple, clear harmony. I'm not trying to steer you in that direction in your own music, but they're just great songs here to learn from. Um, let's think about the tune Beautiful Love. Now this tune starts. Beautiful love, you're all a mystery. Let's look at these notes one by one. Beautiful, I don't want to play because I don't want you to see where I am. Beautiful love, da 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 Now, if you've been following along, I'm confident that if I were to just walk up the scale 
and just go ba da 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 da. I'm confident that you could follow along in your mind and picture where I am on your tonal map the whole time. And you could recognize that as six, seven, one, two, three. Okay, so now notice what happens in this melody. It starts out da da da. Now, doesn't that sound familiar? That's exactly how the scale starts. Da da da. Six, seven, one, two, three. But notice what this melody does. Da da da. And then it shoots up to here. Bum. Da 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 da. And so what you what you can always do is to connect with kind of your inner scale right whenever you're hearing music you're always feeling the tonality you're always imagining all the sounds that make up that harmonic environment and you can move up and down through that scale in your mind to clarify any note you're not sure about so when you hear ba da da and let's say you can recognize six seven one but then there's this mystery note da do da da what you can do is in your mind just walk up to it so you have six, seven, one, two, three, and then you recognize that's the sound I was looking for. Three, that's it, beautiful love. And so what you're picturing on your tonal map the whole time is six, seven, one, it jumps up to three. And then the rest of the melody, da, 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 da. Again, if I were just walking down the scale, Three, two, one, seven, six. If I just go ba da 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 da, I'm confident that you could recognize that that's what I'm doing. I'm just walking down three, two, one, seven, six. But here, from the high note, I'm just going da 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 three, two, one, seven, six, and I go back up to seven and then one. So the whole melody is six, seven, one, three, two, one, seven, six, seven, one. Now you may not be able to follow all this, but I don't want the video to take all day. So this is what, this is what we're doing. We're just translating this what I'm trying to do is to try to help you hold in your mind at the same time two different things. One is the melody to this song. You may not know the song, but just the melody that you're hearing me sing. The other thing is the scale itself, because we need to be able to compare and contrast these things in order to picture where we are on the scale or in the scale with each note of the melody. And that's what it is to translate the sound to the map. And what it sounds like is six, seven, one, three, Now the second part of our task as improvisers is then to project these sounds from our tonal map onto our instrument. We need to make the translation from map to instrument. And the way we do that is by understanding the intervals that make up the, the tonal map that we use to visualize where all these sounds are located in the octave. And so if I just continue working in this key on the piano, my six is here. But now let's take a closer look at, at kind of the road map here. If this is a six, that's what puts my seven here because there's a whole step from six to seven. From seven to one is just a half step. Then from one to two is a whole step. So my two is here. From two to three is another whole step. And that puts my three here. And if you'll notice, uh, my right hand, these are the notes I'm playing. Six, seven, one, two, and three. And I could do this anywhere on the piano. I could do it in any key. You can do it on any instrument. I'm not even a piano player, um, but it's really pretty easy. So for example, this melody then, six, seven, one, three, two, one, seven, six, seven, one. That's what we clarified together. And so I just have to play those notes here in this key on my instrument. Six, seven, one, three, to reproduce that melody perfectly in this key of E natural. But now look at what else you can do. Because of the way that you've studied this melody, this melody is really yours now. You truly understand it and you know where it lives in any key. And so what this solves for you is transposing. If someone says, well, we want to play that song, but we don't want to play it in that key. We want to play uh, in the key of A flat. Um, so again, this is now only the second part of the journey. The first part of the journey, that's already done. You've already learned exactly which notes on your tonal map make up that beautiful melody, and so that's done. And so now it's just a question of projecting that sequence of tonal numbers in some other key on your instrument. So if this is gonna be our one, it's a half step down to seven, and a whole step down to six, 
So now I've got my six, seven, one, then a whole step up to two, another whole step up to three. So I've got my six, seven, one, two, three, two, one, seven, six. And because of the way that you've studied this melody, this is now available to you in any key in your improvising or if you want to play this song. Um, literally, it's just six, seven, one, three, two, one, seven, six, seven, one. And of course, the chords we can also take with us to any key. All I'm doing there is uh, the seven chord, the three dominant chord, and the six minor chord. These are very basic chords that we all learn and study in IFR. And so the reason that I want to inspire you to study music in this way is because it solves so many things that musicians struggle with. It solves understanding music by ear, being able to listen to a song and just knowing what it is because for the first time you've got a vocabulary now that matches what you truly hear and feel when you listen to music. I don't have perfect pitch. I don't know the difference between an F and an F sharp. I can't tell you exactly how many hertz there are in, in that frequency. Um, but everybody, not just me, but everybody in the audience knows the feeling of note one. We all know the feeling of note two. We all know the feeling of note three. It's just most people haven't taken the time to clarify which is which because they're not musicians. We as improvisers have to take that extra step because we want to create these sounds in our music. But you already know these sounds and sensations. You've been hearing them all your life and it's how music works. And so that's one of the things that we solve when we start thinking about music. Um, in this tonal way relative to the key of the music using tonal numbers. But it also solves transposing because once you understand a melody or a lick or a phrase or whatever, because you know what notes on your tonal map make up that melody, you know where that melody lives in any key. And so you can go to any key on your instrument and you can play that melody or no matter what key you're improvising in, that melody is available to you. And to me, the most important benefit is what all of this enables, which is a totally different concept of improvisation, meaning that really for the first time, improvising can just be imagining sounds, composing in the world of sounds, making music out of the sounds themselves, and then just understanding how to translate those sounds to your tonal map and how to express those on your instrument. And so once you get you know, a taste of that, you, you don't even care anymore about you know, licks and formulas and things that people tell you to use in your solo because it's just so thrilling to be able to truly create your own music in your imagination and be able to express that on your instrument. So I hope this video has given you an understanding of how that process works and that it gives you very you know, concrete ideas that are exciting to you that you can then explore in your own practicing. If you have any questions about it, please communicate with me. I love talking about this subject. Um, send me a message and I will help you with either part of this practice. But the two halves that we want to look at separately are the translation from the sound to the map and the translation from the map to the instrument. So I hope that's clear.